Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. For years, people have speculated there is a third secret of Fatima that has never been revealed by the Church. Finally, new light has come from an unexpected place in an almost off-the-cuff manner. Skeptics say the third secret released by the Vatican in 2000 is not complete, that something is being hidden from the public. They think it might be warnings against changes introduced by Vatican II or struggles in the Church. When the third secret was released, Mother Angelica of EWTN famously said at 045, she didn't think we got the whole thing. She said, I think it's scary, and that wasn't scary. Now, revealed for the first time, the true third secret of Fatima is absolutely terrifying. So terrifying, Sister Lua, commanded by her bishop to write it in case something should happen to her, spent days agonizing over it. But she could not bring herself to do it. In the end, after a prompt from heaven, she did, of course, write it down. Exorcist Gabriel Moore said Saint Padre Pio told him he knew the third secret of Fatima and at 121, it tormented him. Father Malachi Martin, asked to help draft a response to the secret for Pope John XXIII, read the third secret of Fatima. Martin said, if released, people would fill the confessionals and kneel and strike their breasts. The new information about Fatima comes from Akita, Japan. What does the apparition at Fatima have to do with Akita, Japan? In 1973, Our Lady appeared in Akita to Sister Sagwa and gave her a message for mankind. The third message of Akita was given on October 13, 1973, the anniversary day of the miracle of the sun at Fatima. And like with Fatima, it has been discovered recently that a part of this message from Akita was never released. Cardinal Ratzinger, the future Pope Benedict XVI, served as the head of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith at the time. In that role, he studied both the secret of Fatima and the message from Akita. At one point, he pronounced the two messages of Fatima and Akita are essentially the same. Bishop Ed of Akita also said the two messages are the same. Everyone thought this was strange because the official text of the third secret of Fatima released in 2000 has nothing in common with the strikingly apocalyptic message given by Our Lady at Akita. At the end of 2023, on the Mother and Refuge of the End Times YouTube channel, a video was posted featuring Father Elias Mary, an expert on Akita. Father Elias read a passage from Father Yasuda's book, written only in Japanese. Father Yuda served as the spiritual director for Sister Sagwa, who received the message from Blessed Mary. He was considered a very holy priest having the odor of sanctity. In Father Yuda's book, titled O Maria Zon Nam, it's a holy mother's statue and its tears, an anthology of tap recorded preachings or talks given by Father Yuda, the book was published in 2003 in Japanese. It's never been translated into English. So he was a very important figure. He was the one, as I said, Bishop Ito said was like the official explainer of the message of Akita. If Sister had any confusion or didn't know what certain things meant, he was the one who was supposed to enlighten her. The era of the Antichrist Pope will soon come, and no matter how much we worry, we cannot prevent this, and there is nothing we can do about it. Therefore, we must properly defend our faith. The Akita and Fatima messages are the same, meaning the Fatima message also tells us the last pope is an Antichrist pope. Silenced in 1917, Our Lady repeated her message in 1973. Father Elias Mary speculates about the seriousness of this part of the message. Sister Sagwa herself revealed this, she might have been punished severely, but Father Yuda, being elderly and respected, no one took any action against him. So it may have been that's the way Our Lady chose to give this message. Ironically, Father Elias Mary was searching Father Suda's book for information on the meaning of the word, sign left by my son, used by Our Lady in the message when he stumbled upon the passage about the last Pope as the Antichrist. Finally, the third message of Akita, which is the same as the third secret of Fatima, can be revealed in its entirety, adding the hidden sentences where they fit best. For the first time, 
we have what is most likely the complete message as given by Our Lady at Akita and Fatima. As I told you, if men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge, such as one will never have seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity, the good as well as the bad, sparing neither priests nor faithful. The thought of the loss of so many souls is the cause of my sadness. If sins increase in number and gravity, there will be no longer pardon for them. Terrifying, shocking, the Pope being the Antichrist has been said throughout the ages by enemies of the Church. What is shocking is that Blessed Mary said it, so we know it to be true, as she speaks truth. Let us examine it closer. Many times God's revelations are unveiled generally but then more specifically as the event approaches. I will put enmity between the woman and you, the serpent. We now know that woman is blessed Mary of Nazareth. For example, St. Paul tells us in 2 Thessalonians 2, the Antichrist will seat himself in the temple of God. Let no one deceive you in any way, for unless the falling away comes first and the lawless one is revealed, the one doomed to perdition who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God and object of worship so as to seat himself in the temple of God. In his commentary on this verse, St. Augustine wrote in, City of God, Book 20, It is uncertain in what temple the Antichrist shall sit, whether in that ruin of the temple which was built by Solomon or in the church. There is no Vatican, no Church of Rome. Of course, at the time of St. Paul, he spoke generally. Fast forward to 1846, Our Lady appeared in Lelet, France, and reportedly said, Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist. This is more specific now, mentioning Rome, the head of the Church. One could say Our Lady's use of the words, seat of the Antichrist, points to the chair of St. Peter and echoes in a more specific manner what St. Paul said. Move forward again to 1917 at Fatima. Blessed Mary said, like the first Judas, the last pope will sell my son to the enemy. The era of the Antichrist Pope will soon come. Accordingly, a Pope, the one who sits on the chair of Peter, will be an Antichrist Pope. A very specific warning, since that time is near, and this message is repeated at Akita, Japan, 56 years to the day after the miracle of the sun at Fatima. One might object, but this is the only explanation that makes sense of all we know about the third secret of Fatima, that explains all the hints and innuendo said over the last 100 years about the third secret of Fatima. It explains why Cardinal Chapi, theological advisor to five popes, euphemistically said, the unreleased part of the Fota secret predicted the great apostasy in the Church. We'll begin at the top. It explains why Cardinal Adivani stated to a reporter, the third secret had been relegated to the bottom of the Vatican archives, and that's where it deserves to stay. It explains why Sister Lucia easily wrote of demons she saw in hell but could not write the third secret and why she confessed to being traumatized by it. It explains why Padre Pio was tormented by the third secret but not by any future catastrophic events. It explains why Father Malachi Martin said, believers would fall to their knees in shock, striking their breasts. It explains why Pope John XXIII nearly fainted when it was read to him, and it might explain why Archbishop Fulton Sheen said, the mystical body of Antichrist will be set up in counterpoint to the mystical body of Christ on earth today, with its Judases recruited by Satan from our bishops as its leader. His mention of Judas might be happenstance, but it is so close to the words of Our Lady at Foda and Akita to make one wonder if he too had read or been told the actual secret. Exorcist Gabriel Amor said Padre Pio was tormented by only one thing. Padre Pio said to Gabriel, you know, Gabriel, it is Satan who has been introduced into the bosom of the church, and within a very short time will come to rule the ape of the church. When told this by author Jose Zala, exclaimed, oh my gosh, some sort of antichrist. On the Art Bell show, Father Malachi Martin was asked by a listener to comment on his Jesuit priest friend telling him the last pope would be under the control of Satan. Martin's reply, yes, 
it sounds as if they were reading or being told the text of the third secret. Father Martin, stand by. We'll be right back to you, top of the hour. I'm Art Bell, and this is Coast to Coast. And this is Coast to Coast AM from the Kingdom of New York with Art Bell, and we are indeed heard worldwide. I have a question from Stan, Stan Deo, down in Perth, actually not Perth, but something that was told to him about the third secret in Perth. I'm Art Bell. This is Coast to Coast AM. Father Malachi Martin, the Exorcist, is here, and we'll be right back. There is a little Antichrist mentioned in sacred scriptures. Those who deny God in the flesh, Father and Son. Most of what we know of the Antichrist comes from St. Paul in 2 Thessalonians and from Revelation, although that book is replete with symbolism, so one must be very careful in its interpretation. St. Paul is clear, although he doesn't say much. The Catechism is also a source, and we already looked at the main passage about Antichrist there. Interestingly, Pope Benedict said the Antichrist does not have to be recognized as evil, he can appear acceptable, benevolent, but he, however, goes against God. He also believed the Antichrist would reinterpret the words of sacred scripture in such a way as to cause confusion. And then, of course, there is Our Lady, both at Lourdes and at Fatima, with Fatima's message being repeated at Akita. From St. Paul, the Antichrist, the lawless one, will come after the restrainer is removed from the scene. The lawless one represents the climax of human self-assertive force against God in the temple of God itself. Why does God allow this? St. Paul says, God is sending them a deceiving power so that they may believe the lie, that all those who have not believed the truth but have approved wrongdoing may be condemned. On the objection that a pope cannot be the Antichrist, Jesus said, the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against his church. Saint Athanasius, when told the bishops were against him, answered that proves that they are all against the church. Catholics who remain faithful to tradition, even if they are reduced to but a handful, they are the true church of Jesus Christ. An antichrist pope would be a bishop dressed in white, giving the impression to the world he is the Holy Father. Interestingly, Jesus gave the keys to Peter, making him the first pope. But a few verses later, Peter contradicts Jesus, and Jesus shockingly says to him, Get behind me, Satan. So a pope can become an obstacle to Jesus, he can speak like the dragon. This brings us back to Pope Benedict XVI. Benedict was not a fool, humble, gentle, learned, scholarly. That was Pope Benedict, a man of superior intellect, a master theologian, a man who knew the actual secret of Fatima. But he knew more, he knew of the reports of evil amongst the clerics, both outside and especially inside the Vatican. He knew the warnings of his predecessors, of the intent of God's enemies to infiltrate the church. He could see a majority of those at the top in the Vatican holding to heresy. He received the red report on the corruption in the Vatican, and he knew the prophecy of the popes from Garabandal, namely that after John XXIII, there would be four more popes, and he was that fourth pope, and then it would be the end of the times according to Our Lady at Garabandal in the 1960s. All this, along with his scholarship, his knowledge of theology, and his privileged position in the church hierarchy over the decades, which provided access to the full secret of Fatima, as well as a vast body of information from other Marian apparitions, he most likely came to believe he was the last true pope and the one to follow him would be the Antichrist Pope, as revealed by Our Lady of Fatima. Benedict reacted, he worked to synthesize Vatican II with Praic II. He eased restrictions on the Latin Mass, but facing growing resistance within the Vatican and growing frail, Pope Benedict decided to act and act boldly. Knowing all that was written in Scripture must occur and what Our Lady had said must occur, he resigned the papacy, likely believing this would usher in the Antichrist Pope. Tellingly, that night, lightning struck St. Peter's, Lucifer fell in an instant like lightning from heaven. So, for the first time in the history of the Church, we had two bishops in white, 
a pope and an honorary pope living in the Vatican. By keeping his ties to the papacy, he retained some authority, specifically regarding any teachings of heresy. If the next pope clearly taught against church doctrine, Benedict could speak out, hoping to delay corruption of doctrine. Because of Benedict's acumen as a theologian and his title of Pope Emeritus, he could hope they would listen. Thus, he could possibly place a check on the next pope. Of course, Benedict knew the next pope would most likely outlive him, so why bother? Why not just live to 95, as he did, shortening the years of an antichrist pope because stress kills? He most likely would have died long before 95 had he continued to reign. In 2010, at Fatima, Benedict prayed for Our Lady's triumph to come during the next seven years before the 100th anniversary of Fatima in 2017. He knew the triumph is near. By serving as a check on the lawless one, he could hope to delay the full onset of the destruction of doctrinal truth in Christ's church, mitigating the suffering until Our Lady's triumph. Thus, he would serve as the restrainer. From his deep faith, Benedict knew God placed him precisely at this moment in time. He alone had vast knowledge of both scripture and the dawning of the era of Antichrist. He alone was perfectly positioned to delay the full onslaught of the Antichrist's destruction of the Church of Jesus. And so, for the first time, and probably the last time, the world saw two popes in white in the Vatican, one intent on serving Christ until the end, one intent on changing Christ's Church forever. It is true that Benedict never revealed the secret of Fatima or any of this, for that matter. We know he knew the real secret of Fatima about the last pope, the Antichrist Pope. We also know Benedict spoke in an exacting, efficient manner, and we now know from the American conservative in 2015, he wrote his friend a telling message, we see how the power of the Antichrist is expanding, and we can only pray that the Lord will give us strong shepherds who will defend his church in this hour of need from the power of evil. He carefully chose the words, this hour, knowing their significance, to mean now, because theologically speaking, the terms, this hour, or, my hour, mean this moment in time or my time. So one could argue he believed we are living in the time of the Antichrist. Finally, the PHA mystery is complete, we are living it out now at this hour, as Mother Angelica suspected. It is scary. Sister Lucia said the photo message is in the book of Revelation and the Gospels. Eschatology is the theological study concerned with the final events in the history of mankind. Our Lady used the words, Last Pope, and Antichrist Pope. Theologically, both of these happen at the end of all things, as the Catechism reminds, the final trial of the Church is the supreme religious deception of the Antichrist. This final trial will separate the wheat from the chaff, those who stay true to Church doctrine and those who follow the deception of the Antichrist, who puts himself above the deposit of the faith given by God. So one can see how the Foda prophecy tells us we are at the end of all things. For any who wondered what it would be like to live during the Roman persecutions or for the time of the Arian heresy, we get to live through something worse. Father Elias Mary said, Father Yudah wrote about this time, no matter how much we worry, we cannot prevent this. There is nothing we can do about it. We must properly defend our faith. But the growth and the power of the mystery of iniquity brings us that much closer to the glorious triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Blessed Mary promises us that in the end, her Immaculate Heart will triumph. She has assured us, as Our Lady of the Good Event, that when everything seems completely lost, it will be her hour, the time when she will act in a glorious way to restore all things. And Jesus promises he will return to slay the Antichrist. Our only means of help at this hour are the Holy Rosary and the sign left by my Son, which is the Holy Eucharist at the Holy Sacrifice of the Massachusetts Holy Eucharist Reception, of course, also means confession. We need to confess, receive Holy Communion often, and recite the Rosary daily. This is the time of the Antichrist, but it is also our time. 
We have been placed here by God at this precise moment, this final hour, to look up, to defend the church. So when Jesus returns, he will find faith. When these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Be not afraid. In the world, you will have trouble, but take courage. I have conquered the world. Behold, I'm coming soon. God bless.